What's up, Light Force? Uh, we saw last week that the Bible is full of treasure, and it's important. Stop. That hippo is really, really creepy. Creepy? Yeah, what do you mean? it's looking at the camera, like dead in the camera. Me? No, the hippo. The hippo? This one? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Life Force? Um, happy to have you here with us this Sunday morning. Um, last week we saw that the Bible is full of treasure. It's an important book because of what is in it and how that can help us today. Uh, and it tells us lots of stuff about God. Now, I've got some Bibles with me here today. I've got a super old Bible, teeny tiny words. It's even got a special box. I've got a well-used children's Bible with lots of pictures and lots of words and i have a bit more of a grown-up bible called the hands-on bible uh, when you graduate life force you get one of these and again there's lots and lots of words in it what about my brand new one uh icon's got a brand new one but i don't know where it is well it's not really brand new anymore i don't know where it is um often people ask why are there so many different types of bible which is the right one to read and how should I read it? There's only one version of a book like the Gruffalo, for example. I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. Uh, and that's not that important in a book. So shouldn't there be only one type of Bible if it's super important? Well, let's think for a minute um, and look at what makes the Bible different than the Gruffalo. First of all, the Bible is not a book like the Gruffalo. The book, the Bible is more like this bookshelf here. On my bookshelf, I've got lots of different types of books and the Bible has lots of different types of books in it as well. In fact, it has 66 different books in it. Some of the books are long, some of them are short, some of them are about history, some of them are about poetry, some of them are rules and lists, and some of them are about stuff that hasn't even happened yet. And some of them are even a combination of all those different types of books. So, the Bible is not a book. It is more like my bookshelf because it has lots of different types of books in it. Um, on my bookshelf, I have lots of books by different types of people. Um, some of these writers have more than one book on my bookshelf. Someone like uh, David Williams or J.K. Rowling has lots of books um, on my bookshelf. And it's the same is true in the Bible. Some of the people in the Bible wrote more than one book. So people like Paul and Luke, they wrote more than one book. But whoever wrote the book, it is important to know that God co-wrote it with them. Um, Paul and Luke and those guys might have been actually writing down the words, but God was inspiring them to do it. And that's one of the things that makes the Bible different than any other book, is that God co-wrote it. Now here is where we can start thinking about why there are lots of different types of Bibles. Because a lot of the books in the Bible were written a very, very long time ago, and they weren't written in English or French or Mandarin or Shona. They were written in languages that lots of people do not understand right now. So one reason why we have lots of different types of Bible is that because they've been rewritten into lots of different languages so that we can read them today. Now, even if it was written in English hundreds of years ago, that might still be hard to read now. If you think about someone like Shakespeare who wrote plays in English a couple of hundred years ago, if you watch the Shakespeare play, you might have trouble understanding what is going on. Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? So even if the Bible is written in English, it doesn't mean it's English that is easy to understand. Um, because even like the way words are written down and the order of the words can change over time. So you might have a children's Bible that has a lot less words in it and a lot less, a lot more pictures, but it will still have the same amount of treasure in it. You'll still have stories like David and Goliath. And you'll have stories about Jesus being born, Jesus being alive, Jesus dying, and then Jesus coming back to life again. So even in a children's Bible, there is so much treasure that you can find in it. And just like I said, God wrote it. Um, Pastor Paul has this amazing saying where he says, the Bible is the only book where when you read it, the author is present. The person who wrote it is present. Because just like God was around when it was written, God is also with us when we read it. And God can help us find the treasure that is in it. Now, you might not have a Bible at home. And if you haven't, we would like to send one to you. Just pop us a comment below or send us a message and we will sort that out for you. We can send you um, 
a Bible, Bible in the post. I'll drop it off and that'd be really good. Um, but finally, I'm going to leave you with um, one of Justin's favorite Bible stories. He's going to tell us all about that and what kind of treasure he's found in it. Why don't you have a think about what your favorite Bible story is? Maybe ask any of the grown-ups in your house. Why not um, draw a picture of what is happening in your favorite Bible story? Um, and then we'll see you again next week when we start thinking more about how we can find treasure in the Bible. Hey guys, how are you? Good to see you. I hope you're all well. Now, I've been asked to share a little bit about my favourite story in the Bible. Now, there's loads I could have picked. There's so many good stories. One of my absolute ultimate favourites is one of the classics, David and Goliath. You'll find it in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And it tells a story how David, who was an Israelite, uh, was fighting for the Israelites army. Now the Israelites were fighting against the, the, the Philistines and they were just at battle. And they got to this point where they were um, facing off to each other and no one wanted to make the attack first. And what they did in those days is they send forward their biggest, bravest soldier and they will fight each other and whoever won, that's who won the battle. So the Philistines had this guy called Goliath who was enormous and he just came out every day and said, come on then, I'll have any of you who thinks you can take me. The problem was all the Israelites were scared. Now David wasn't in the army at this point. What he was really was Mr Deliveroo. He was off to deliver sandwiches to his brothers who were part of the army. So he turns up and he hears Goliath giving all this mouth, giving it, come on, I'll take you on who wants to do it. And he says to his brothers who were bigger and stronger than him, David says, what's the matter with you? Why don't you fight Goliath? And they're all like, we're a bit scared. He's big, he'll kill us. You know, he, he, he's well hard. And David's like, what are you talking about? He's big, but God's bigger than any of them lot. So David gets out there, says, I can take him. He picks out five stones, a bit like this, smooth stones. Massive Goliath, small David. Really, you'd say he's got absolutely no chance. But with God on his side, he does it. He gets his stones in his sling, flings it around, throws it at Goliath. Down he goes, dead, out for the count. And that's it. When God's on your side, there's literally nothing you can't beat. If he's with you, no matter how big the problem is or how small you feel, you can always do it. That's my favourite story of the Bible and that's why. See you again soon.